The vast North American wilderness is home to evil forces thought only to exist in nightmares. But the terrible creatures that roam here are all too real. of West Virginia lurks a fearsome entity born of bloody legend. Once it latches onto you, it won't let go. It looks like death. You made it angry. Ah! Run! This is just pure evil. Oh, I can't go! Go come and get us. It's gonna come and get us. Point Pleasant, West Virginia is postcard pretty on the outside. But years ago, a devastating tragedy shook its residents to the core. The Silver Bridge uh, was, was a bridge spanning from Point Pleasant to Canalga, Ohio. Uh, it collapsed on uh, December 15, 1967. It was the worst bridge disaster in U.S. history, claimed 46 lives. This was just a huge, traumatic event for the small town. I was right in the middle of it when it happened. I was five years old in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. At the time, a mysterious creature was seen clinging to the bridge. Because of its expansive wings and insect-like appearance, it became known as the Mothman. There were people that, that claimed they seen it flying around some of the towers of the, of the bridge a few days before the, the bridge collapsed. People thought that this creature caused the, the collapse of the bridge. There were over a uh, hundred reported sightings to the authorities. My guess is there were probably hundreds more who never reported anything because they were afraid of being called crazy. There are those that think the Mothman itself is a harbinger of doom. The Mothman sightings in 1966 started a gigantic surge of media coverage and a lot of curious people who descended on Point Pleasant to, to get a glimpse of this creature for themselves. You know, there were people driving around with, with rifles and guns. The military and the, and the police did come in and uh, quarantined that area off. This, this brought a lot of theories that there was a cover-up. The fear still is out there. These days, this legendary being is said to haunt the woods outside of Point Pleasant. It's a perfect environment. It still is. It's desolate. It's very eerie. It's, it's dead silent. Nothing has really changed in the 60, 70 years. It's a very scary place to be. In 2008, Jeff and Crystal Drenning head out to the area for a little getaway. When we went on this trip, we thought we were just going for a day trip, something different. I had no idea it would change our lives like this. I entirely regret it. I, I wish we would have gone anywhere else but Point Pleasant. We were working retail uh, management at the time, and it was few and far between that we had weekends off together. So one came up, and we decided it was within driving distance. We, we wanted to head out to that area. So if we keep going down... A casual way. stop for directions changes their destiny. Okay. Okay. The man started talking to us and explained these okay. stories. So that'll bring us to the bunker? As he was telling us this, you know, I, I thought it was pretty cool. It was neat something different. So he just drew us a map where there was a lot of paranormal activity reported. Thank you so much cool. for your help. Yeah. Thanks. Sir. Thanks. Uh, Crystal and I always always shared a, just a brief interest in the paranormal. Uh, I mean, we didn't really put much stock into it. But upon being alerted to Mothman's stalking grounds, they find the lure irresistible. Go straight ahead. We decided to just give it a shot. You know, it would be like a little adventure following the little little map he drew us, treasure hunt kind of deal. This is it. If I had the opportunity to go back, no, there's there's right. there's absolutely nothing that would uh, get me to go out there. Is this it? I think so. Crystal and Jeff decide to make the most of the experience and return with proof of their adventure. Ready? 
good. We went just like to the local Walmart and got a digital voice recorder. That was the first time we tried anything like that. Ready? Yeah, this thing works. <laughs> this way? Sure. It did feel eerie, which we just attributed to the environment itself. I think this is the place. Do you have that recorder thing? Oh, yeah. Did you put the batteries in it? Yes, I did. <laughs> Do you want to work it? And record. Hello? Is anyone there? If you're here, can you, you know, make an audible noise to make your presence known? Just say a word. Can you hear me? Here, let me try. Good luck. Are you there? Can you hear me? If there's anything you want to tell us, this is your last chance. At the time, we audibly heard absolutely nothing. Let's go. Sure. And when we backed out, I didn't think anything happened. You know, I just chalked it up to uh, cross this little adventure off on the list and head back into town. I'll try and get some rest. When we got back home, we were just kind of waiting around to go out to eat. Did you get anything? So we just thought we'd waste some time and rewind the recorder and see what we got. Can you hear me? Are you ready? I'm ready. There? Just on the off chance, I mean, it was more of an obligation. We took the time to ask the questions, go out there and actually do the session. Might as well give it a go. Listen to what we recorded. If there's anything you want to tell us, this is your last chance. I am what? No, no, no. Let me see that. And then we heard this really deep voice just say, I'm here. Someone's messing with and, us. Uh, did you I just blew my mind. Like, it was like we almost went to like kind of a state of shock. We just were speechless, just stared at each other. We blew our minds. We couldn't believe that we actually caught something on a recorder. If there's anything you want to tell us, this is your last chance. <laughs> It, it, it just takes you aback. Uh, it was it was really a deep, raspy, guttural voice, but uh, it didn't sound like it, it, it should come from any humanoid vocal cords. I was not prepared for what was going to happen next. It was just a computer or telemarket or something like that. That was weird. What was it? I mm -hmm. But I quickly found out that it wasn't any of those things. <laughs> Jeff? a voice and it was definitely not human it was really strange i 
knew that something wasn't right. We knew we're dealing with something that shouldn't exist. Let's go inside. We knew 100% that whatever we picked up in Point Pleasant had followed us home. On a whim, Jeff and Crystal Drenning went into the woods to try and contact a legendary creature, the Mothman. If there's anything you want to tell us, this is your last chance. If you go in and mess with something like this, we have learned the hard way that you're almost opening a door. <laughs> now that they've conjured the entity, it won't leave them alone. People that, uh, you know, had encounters, you know, with this thing are never to be able to shake that feeling that there's something unexplainable that is still in their life. It won't go away, uh, a haunting, so to speak. Odd things started happening. We were getting ready to go out to dinner. And I went into the bathroom just to touch up makeup or something like that. I went to grab the doorknob. <laughs> and the doorknob was just burning hot. And I pulled my hand back and there was like this dark black ashy substance on my fingers from where I touched the knob. I immediately thought, oh my gosh, something is on fire. <laughs> so she yelled for me, so I go. And I touch the doorknob, and it, it's it's burning hot. I mean, it, it's radiating heat from inside the doorknob. It's, it's literally hot to touch at the point where it blisters your hand. Fire! Fire! Crystal, are you okay? Jeff! I thought there was a fire in the wall, possibly with the wiring. I, I'm, I'm looking around to make sure, you know, hey, there's no fire internally in the wall. There was nothing, no fire. Everything was completely normal. Jeff? We then opened up the back of the bathroom door. handprints on, on, on the back of the bathroom door. It was these elongated fingers, almost really skinny, long fingers with, with the hand there. I mean, the hand's three or four times the size of mine. I mean, I'm a pretty big guy, and this is just, it, it, it dwarfs mine in comparison. And we see the handprints on the door, and it's like this, this ashen, sooty kind of uh, residue. And it's just two or three of them on the door. tell it, it, it was it wasn't human there, there's no way it was him we realized pretty soon that the activity that we started to have was nothing compared to what we would end up having to deal with when I was home alone I was definitely on edge It was looking over your shoulder, wondering if something's going to happen at any time. And it takes a lot out of you to be constantly on edge like that. Jeff, thought you were at work. 
she continues to talk to what she thought was me, and there's no response. And she saw a hand just press up against the shower curtain. There's, there's something there. It's not, it's not something she imagined. I mean, she actually felt it. There would be different things drawn. There'd be like big handprints. There'd be different symbols, mainly like drawings of eyes and things like that. The door was locked. There's no way anybody else could come in and draw them. It takes it to an entirely different level. I mean, your home is supposed to be your safe haven and it's now ground zero, essentially. It was late. I, I worked a closing shift. It was probably 10, 10, 30 p.m. I was, I was out in the middle of nowhere on this one stretch of highway. It's, it's incredibly desolate. There's no, there's no residences around or anything for probably 15, 20 miles. This was a road that I, I had driven daily, uh, I mean, to and from work. I, I never noticed anything out of the ordinary prior to this. And I rounded a turn on the, on the road and just on the edge of my headlights, caught a silhouette of someone and I thought that that's kind of strange. A hitchhiker out here in the middle of nowhere, he's, he's, he's never going to catch a ride. I mean, he's, he's literally in the middle of nowhere. As I approach him, I can see that this this wasn't a normally dressed person. Uh, I mean, they had a cloak on, like a hood. It draped all the way down to their ankles. Their hands were at their side. Do you ride or what? They had these really Hello? twitchy kind of movement to them. Can you get out of the way? This thing turned around it brought its forearm up to shield its eyes from the headlights. And the first thing that I noticed was this desiccated gray mottled looking skin on the hand. I mean, it, it, it almost looked decomposed. Then it brought its arm down see two eyes glowing. And it wasn't like an animal's eyes when you shine a light on them that reflect back at you. These were independently glowing. Uh, I mean, it, it, almost like it had its own light source. So I'm completely awestruck. This doesn't make sense to me. And then it breaks the stillness of the whole situation. I let out this ear-piercing shriek. It looks almost like death, what you think death would look like.
there's there's something unexplainable in their life. It won't go away. This thing is just pure evil. The legendary Mothman has haunted the woods of West Virginia since the 1960s. Jeff and Crystal Drenning have crossed its path, and now it's stalking them. <laughs> They're seeing this thing and hearing it and encountering it over and over. It's terrifying to live with this. Your home is supposed to be a safe place to be, and you never know when something's going to happen. Jeff finds himself face to face with the blood curdling creature in the middle of nowhere. I'm, I'm trying to wrap my mind around what is in front of me. It was really animalistic. The movement in itself is enough for me to know there's no way, shape, or form that was a human. It's coming closer to me. So immediately, I, I think, uh, you know, oh my God, what, what, what am I going to do? when something was near. It was just, the air became just really thick. You could almost feel your lungs start to tighten up and your heart beating. It was almost as just as if it just surrounded you. physically uh, I mean that's th that's an entirely different ball game it's terrifying I mean you feel violated almost just something has breached your home but at the same time it's terrifying because I mean obviously this thing that isn't supposed to exist not only contacted you not only replied to what you said it's taken an the next step further and followed you home. We began to hear that voice, not only in recordings, but we would actually got to the point where we would hear it audibly. And every time I hear that voice, it's just complete dread. It just, this voice is just like pure evil. I would wonder, you know, what do you want? What do you want from us? No, he's here, he's here. We would actually hear things in a home, you know, just disembodied footsteps. As the activity grew stronger, it became more violent. that would come out of the cabinet and break silverware that would actually be thrown on the floor. You could hear from the next room. 
the knocks on the wall. No! 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 <laughs> the phone calls, the, the disembodied footsteps. Sometimes you hear voices as well in the next room. Garbled speech, you couldn't really make out what it was saying, but you could definitely tell that it was there. <laughs> Pushed to the point of desperation, Crystal and Jeff return to where their nightmare began. You ready? Yeah. We decided to go back just to try to get some answers. We just had enough. We got to a point where we were like, that's it. You know, this thing has followed us home, but we know that it came and attached itself to us in Point Pleasant, so we're going to go there to the source and just confront this once and for all. I mean, it was almost a last-ditch effort. It seemed like we didn't have anywhere else to turn. It was a completely different ball game than the first time. The first time that we went, we were just, you know, looking for some entertainment, having fun. This time we wanted to fight this thing down. When we crossed that threshold, it was almost like we could feel just this really ominous, suppressing type feeling. It was almost like something was closing in around you. This is it. Do you have the quarter? Do you have the quarter off? Yeah. Are you here? This time it was it was more along the lines of demanding answers. Tell us what you want. We've had enough. We were very frustrated. We were tired of it. What do you want from us? Just leave us alone. This, this feeling continued to grow and grow. It was a feeling I can't even begin to explain. It was almost like you just wanted to jump out of your own body. Seriously, we can't take it anymore. We know you're here. Come out. Finally, Jeff just told it. It's now or never. After I had said, it's now or never, I gave it 10 or 15 seconds to answer. I didn't hear anything. Oh, come on, Jeff. What was that? I don't know. It was like a freight train hit me. Something just hit him in the chest, and he just lifted up in the air and just went. Are you okay? I thought, this is it. I'm going to die. There's there's no doubt about it. He just looked up at me. His face was pure white, and he just said, run. What? Run! I'm not leaving you. I jet as fast as I can. felt like we were running for our lives that whatever this was I thought we were done for <laughs> after months of torment <laughs> Jeff and Crystal returned to the site where they first encountered Mothman to beg for peace it doesn't work. Run! 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 I just 
know that an unseen force literally just assaulted me. So in my mind, it was run, get to the car, get out of here. I was pretty much in shock when we were running. I just, I thought that this was it, that it was going to kill us. The only thing going through my mind was just to get as far away as possible. I do regret going back. I don't know if it gave it any more, you know, energy. Despite the couple's attempt at a truce, Mothman won't let go of them. After we confronted this, it, it just felt like there was nothing that we can do. We felt hopeless. We didn't know if we just made it angry, so things are going to get worse. We just heard this extremely deep growl come from inside. Let's just stop. Let's just go. Come on, get in the front. Get in the front. And we left. And we thought if we moved, everything was over. But it wasn't. For the Drennings, the terror doesn't end. Mothman follows them wherever they go. I think we definitely opened a doorway. There's no doubt about that. What came through it, I don't know. How to get rid of it. I don't know if it's going to follow us the rest of our lives or not I I really hope not but I mean it just seems like whatever we do nothing gets rid of it we've actually had a Catholic priest come to our house and bless it twice but it just always comes back so we just have to deal with it on a daily basis But the question is, what exactly is Mothman? Some say the story goes back to a bloody chapter of West Virginia's history. Chief Cornstalk was a uh, Shawnee chief who was murdered over a land dispute. Him and his son both were actually murdered back in the 1700s. It was told over the years that Chief Cornstalk actually cursed the town of Point Pleasant in the form of a 200-year curse in revenge for him and his, his son's death. And exactly two centuries after the massacre, Mothman descends on Point Pleasant to wreak havoc. 200 years to the month, to the day, and to the year, that's when the bridge fell. Some contend Mothman is the personification of Chief Cornstalk's revenge. Others refute that claim but most believe he is not of this world. There were some people who claimed this thing had biblical connotations. They thought that, you know, this, this thing was just pure evil, period. So I don't know if anybody will ever be able to have a, have a direct answer. Whatever the origin, the legend persists. And even after taking 46 lives, Mothman still stalks the area. Few are foolish enough to go looking for him. And those who do often suffer the consequences. My brother wanted to try to find the Mothman. Faye DeWitt and her brother Topper's encounter takes place even before the horrific bridge collapse. Bugman of Virginia. That's, uh, that's real spooky. 
What do you think it eats? Maybe it eats people. Oh, God. Maybe it uh, uses its mothy proboscis to drink them dry from the inside out. Really, Topper? It was my brother's big idea to go up there and try to find it. He was going to prove that that was a fake because he was a very skeptical person, a very smart person to the point that he, you know, he didn't think nobody knew anything but him. And he was going to prove the moth mag was a fake, and that was his intent of going up there. But what if we actually see it? Then what are you going to do? You're going to eat your words. That's what you're going to do. I'll, I'll go out and shake hands with it and try to look for the zipper. How about that? I don't know why you made me do this. Do you see that? I thought, well, what is it? You see what? Nothing. Plain as day. What did it look like? It was just a deer or something. It wasn't a deer. Big deer? It's so stupid. So, which way? This was your idea, not mine. What? Don't turn around. Why? My brother just kept looking at me. He said, don't look, there's something there beside the window. No. In my peripheral vision, I could see it there beside me, even though I was looking straight ahead. And I told him, what we're going to do, what we're going to do. Did you see that? There are a lot of people who go looking for this creature and, you know, playing it off as, as uh, you know, maybe just some fun. But uh, once they encountered it themselves, you know, I think they changed their tune. Faye DeWitt and her brother Topper head out to prove that Mothman, the mythical being haunting the woods of Point Pleasant, is a hoax. They find out the hard way that it's not. I got scared the minute I turned my head and saw that thing beside the window. It had like rubbery tight skin like on him and long Fingers, long, curly nails on. I mean, like you would see on a hawk or a bird. But if one thing stands out, the eyes is what caught you. You're focused on that, and that's what those eyes did. The Mothman definitely has a, uh, a way of uh, hypnotizing. I would say just about everyone who, who witnessed this, this creature talked about how they were almost paralyzed by, you know, these two red eyes. We were just scared to move, afraid if we moved, it might try to come in the car. Go. Go. turned he thought he was going to throw him when we made the turn but it didn't we were going down the road like a racetrack and it seemed to be right beside the window there he was trying to speed up and, and lose it and it just was right there beside of the window just like nothing, like it was no effort whatsoever. No! 
that. We'll get trapped in there. And he made that turn to the loading dock where they would fill the trucks up. And I said, don't go in there. Then how are we going to get out? It'll have us pent. Where'd he go? Maybe we lost him. And when he did that... He crouched kind of like a squat position, looking at me and my brother. And we just drew back and tried to be real quiet and don't move. And I told him, what we're going to do, what we're going to do. It jumped off the car. It landed just a few feet away. And it crunched down just like it did in the car and watched us crouch like a gargoyle. What are you doing? Are you crazy? Topper! What are you doing? Hey! Get out of here! Hey! He was picking up chunks of coal, throwing it at it. Get out of here! Tom, are you back here? And I was hitting him, telling him, get in here, leave it alone, let's get out of here. Yes. And it stood up. Get back in here! And I told him, now you done made it mad, it's gonna come and get us, it's gonna come and get us. My brother said, don't move, don't move. I said, okay, okay, what's it gonna do, what's it gonna do? Faye and Topper go looking for a creature they think is a hoax. Did you see that? Until they find it. <laughs> now they are trapped Get on the road, facing the living nightmare that is Mothman. Topper, you back here! Yes. wings because it just opened it up just as pretty as an angel or any bird and it was beautiful I mean just it was like seeing an angel in a way because of those wings big enough to carry a human being it was beautiful beautiful and <gasps> terrifying it ran and I thought Get sure it here. was coming after us <laughs> It just flew off and off it went. But it was just amazing to see something like that, but we were scared. I told my brother, we need to get out of here and get home because it might come back. So he turned around, whipped around. We went home. That was it, and then the bridge fell, I guess, not long after that. The siblings never see Mothman again. I had a lot of things in my life happen that was scary. Scary. Uh, that was really worse, scary, and life threatening. Though it let Faye and Topper go, Jeff and Crystal aren't as lucky. Mothman continues to terrorize them. We've been dealing with it for eight years. We have no idea why it chose us, but it did. It's almost like it's just there to torture us. This did happen. After nearly a decade, I don't think it's ever going to leave. It's all too real. You need to take precautions. You need to realize that the world isn't as simple as mankind has led us to believe.
you know, my belief is, you know, there is definitely something out there. What it is, I don't know if anybody will be able to answer that. I personally can't answer that question. The unknown is out there, you know. I, I just don't know if that book will ever be closed. Thank you.